The insurance hypothesis says that shareholders like having an audit of financial statements because if anything goes wrong on the audit, there's always the option of suing the auditor to recoup some of their investment. Today, we're going to talk about whether the auditor should be sued or is at fault in the audit of the Thomas Cook Group PLC. There are lots of investigations and the newspapers are banding around, is there a problem with the audit? What did PwC and EY do wrong? So today I'm gonna to look at this from not the general business perspective, but I'm gonna look at it from the audit perspective. Have EY and PwC done the right thing? Are there any issues that we should be concerned about? So let's get into it. First up, let's look at the financial statements. When you look at the most recent set of financials released from Thomas Cook, that was their interim report for 2019. That interim report is publicly available on their website and had a review by the auditor. Now remember a review is a limited level of assurance. It's not the reasonable level that is given on an audit of a financial statements. There's a clear difference between those two. That said, most companies will have a review of their interim or half year financial statements statements and not an audit. If you look at the interim report from EY, and that's going to pop up now on the screen, it says, we draw attention to note one in the financial statements, which indicates that the outcome of the strategic review and the associated conditions in the new financing arrangements is uncertain. As stated in note one, these events or conditions indicate that a material uncertainty exists. This may cast significant doubt on the company's ability to continue as a going concern. Our conclusion is not modified in respect of this matter. So what does that mean? It means that Thomas Cook's management flagged in the financial statements that there was an issue around going concern. They self-reported that there could be some issues around their financing and structure. If you look at the media releases for Thomas Cook, that's also all discussed in media releases and news releases right up to the point where Thomas Cook closes. So has EY met its responsibilities? Well, number one, they raised the fact that there's a material uncertainty and reported it in the audit opinion, or their review opinion, I should say. Number two, they've also raised the fact that there's a going concern issue. Number three, management already flagged it. So according to ISA ASA 570, the auditors have completed everything that is required. They don't think the company was guaranteed to collapse. So there was no need to say, modify the opinion to provide um, an adverse or a qualified opinion, but they raised the issue as ASA ISA 570 and 706 actually require them to do. So they've done the right thing and the beat up in the press probably isn't warranted. Now, questions do get asked about, well, what about on the audit? Have they met all the other requirements? And certainly the UK's Financial Reporting Council, which is their regulator, is investigating the firm. Now, an interesting thing that has come to light at the end of October 2019 is the UK investigations and PwC and EY have been brought in to answer questions from members of parliament about their role in the collapse of Thomas Cook. The report in the Financial Times says that MPs have accused two of the UK's big four accounting groups of being complicit in the failure of Thomas Cook, slamming one, their former auditor PwC, over an alleged conflict of interest on its pay advice. MPs criticised PwC for repeatedly signing off the company's accounts with a clean bill of health, despite admitting they had raised significant risks to financial stability with its board and had concerns over some of their accounting practices. Now, what is interesting to note here is that as long as the company is disclosing and reporting in accordance with accounting standards, then the auditor can simply raise it in the audit report, but we can't do very much more than that. We don't have the ability to do anything else, to shut down a company, to make management take different sorts of advice. Our role is to add credibility to the information that management provide, and if we think we need to flag something, we do that in our opinion, just like EY did 
when they stated that there is a material uncertainty and there is a going concern. We can't do any more than that. So there'll be plenty more I'm sure to come on the investigation of Thomas Cook. Right now keep an eye on my LinkedIn and Facebook feeds. I'm always posting newspaper articles about this sort of stuff. Um, but from the surface of things, EY did everything they were supposed to do under the auditing standard requirements. And these things happen. Not every business succeeds into the future forever. We've certainly seen disruptions to the model of business in terms of travel agents and online bookings and most people doing their own thing rather than going through a travel agent. So it's possible that this sort of collapse was always inevitable. I hope this video provided some useful information that might not have been reported in the press as widely. Obviously we have our audit perspective and we understand audit probably a lot more than the general public. If you thought the video was useful, I'd always appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing for the latest accounting and audit news. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.